Okay, I'm Matthias Halliger. I'm a system architect working on the MMI architecture and of course working with the team that did this virtual cockpit. And I would like to introduce to you some of the operational steps and some of the features you can use here. This is the first entry of the virtual cockpit and this is a, 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 a version for the sports car here since this is driver centric. So this cockpit obviously has the, uh, has the uh, no, no uh, center screen. All the information are placed into this virtual cockpit. So it's a, it's a uh, merge, it's a fusion of your driver information with navigation and, and more infotainment uh, information. And I show you how you can use this in a very flexible way and uh, configure this in a way how you would like to use it. First of all, we have here the on the left uh, side of the steering wheel, which is a very nice three-spoke uh, steering wheel. We have a control center that gives you all, all the operation to control this uh, cockpit with having the hands-on wheel. And this is referring to our center console uh, panel, um, which has this central knob with a, with a touchpad integrated. It's a little bit bigger than in the A3. And what you might see, it has two keys here. And uh, coming to this operation uh, in more detail, and this is what we call the left and the right click. And you have the same here. If you look back to the steering wheel, you have the rotary knob and you have the left and the right click for your left thumb. And uh, also a back button and with these two arrow buttons you have a menu selection. So let me show you the menu selection first. Let's go to the right. For example, we are now with navigation. We can go into a, a board computer mode. We could go into media. We could go into telephony. I uh, didn't connect my phone now, but it would ask you to connect your phone and furthermore back to, to navigation. And the view button is very special. Uh, this was the idea to allow the user to change between what we call here a classical view with a bigger gauges and information reduced, uh, some information inside and like a center screen approach. But if I press the view, the view button once, I uh, open the entire screen like a theater curtain and I see a, a full screen view for example from the map here we have activated uh, in this case our Google Earth map where we, you see that we are on the front of a hotel looking into a wine region here so you get more environmental information from this view you can check uh, for in cities what, what uh, uh, parking lots you find in shopping centers and so on so you get more information but you can configure this to your personal needs so let me show you something let's start with the right button i'm pressing the right button now and get some options and of course since i'm in navigation i get options for the for the map and some other root criteria and so on um, let me show you for example the map settings let's say you prefer uh, a graphical map instead of the Google Earth. Let's go back here and now back twice and we change the, uh, the map mode. Okay, in the zoom level you don't see it as much. This is a very cleaned up map, but here you can see where you are. So it is, it's your taste to use the graphical, uh, more generic map or go back to the uh, uh, to the Google Earth mode, what shows you more and uh, more information about your environment. Let's go back here, and um, I will show you another uh, way how to how to configure this. So um, let's go to the wide view, to the infotainment view, and now it is very cleaned up. If you want to see more information about the root guidance, and let's start the root guidance again like using my left button here, and switch to destination input and this is really new this is a very flat new hierarchy you mainly have one line uh, text input where you have a smart search uh, behind this and you have a list underneath with your with your recent destinations 
and with your home address if configured. Uh, but let's search um, very simply, let's say for a coffee shop, a Starbucks or something in the near. I'm just using the handwriting. See. And of course, I, since I did this already, um, I can either click here and, and use coffee shop and see uh, it is all in the memory. Let's go for Starbucks, for example. It's just rolling down. It's just a little handwriting rolling down. Activation, and now I'm the routes are being calculated. Already calculating my route. I have three options here. Let's say the shortest is good for me. Yeah, so I try to go a longer way. And here is my route guidance active. And now I see all my maneuver criteria since I'm on a parking lot as tells me to go go to the Please next drive to the route shown. Exactly. Let's go to the next road. And if I need more information I can configure this. Let me show you another uh, personalization. Let's say I want to have more route information. This was disabled now. Let's let's do this back on. Go back here. And you see on the left side I get the next maneuver already. So um, these are like this more reduced information or I want to have more information. This depends on you. What you prefer, you can configure this to your personal needs. And this is possible with all the other functions. Of course, navigation functions are more, uh, have more options than media and so on. I will show you also the, the radio, for example, here. So this is a media a media uh, list. We are on Sirius XM now, and after a while it flips back to the to a kind of a now playing sc screen. And if I think this is too much for me, I go on the diffuse button, reduce this, I get just some some little data and see my RPM meter, my my speed in, in, in the classical view. And this can be done at any time with any function. Some of them are kind of adjustments. Mm. What I do once so that I say this is good for me and others I do on the fly. What we also have integrated here besides all the handwriting which is quite powerful and the, and the, the, the left thumb control, yeah, the one click button, um, we have speech and the speech um, gives you the typical speech commands here yeah? but we also try to be more natural and to allow more phrases what you're using uh, accidentally without saying too much in a category style uh, for example I would like to search for a restaurant I could say restaurant next to me but I could also say I'm hungry I am searching for a restaurant along the route so we have some phrases. The line number, please. Okay, let's use the first one. Why not to go to the subway? Line one. So this is subway. A getting. Should I start the route uh, guidance? We're saying I'm. Yes, we're saying uh, I'm hungry. I'm thirsty. Uh, I need fuel. Would you like to enter the some, some phrases as a to get a one-shot entry. Very convenient. Very powerful. Not too many clicks. So this is all up optimized for flat Please hierarchy. Say yes to add the enter destination. Okay. Adding the enter de Okay, let me get this done here. Yeah, it's this guy asking me <laughs> again, again, yeah. The routes uh, are being calculated. Um, so many ways to come to to your destination. Uh, left hand uh, center here, central knob. This also gives uh, your passenger a chance to operate the system. He also has the, to the, the volume button here. You can do a song skip. This is like a small joystick. Let me show you this. We go to the to the to the radio here, satellite radio in this case. And if I if I use the skip button, I go to the next channel. Or let me go back to the previous channel. So um, both the driver and the passenger can share this center console and of course uh, privately for the driver we have the, the wheel buttons and on the right uh, side of the wheel not to forget we have all the audio controls here uh, more volume less volume can do a mute easily with one click 
you can repeat your your Turn voice to command to and uh, the, the push to talk button for the speech and if you want to initiate a call you use the call button or you hang up with this button uh, really convenient and this by the way is a button where you can use some functions as a shortcut and it's kind of a joker button yeah your personal button uh, what your your most loved functions are on this button and you can also use the you program that in yeah, yeah there's, a, there's a list here so for example I can configure here all my all my display from the from the board computer yeah um, and let me see uh, I also can can uh, have more information here and there is also a menu uh, to configure this button in the old days that one of the things one of the basic functions of the the earlier multifunction steering wheels was if you're listening to a you know an iPod next track is there a way to do that on the steering wheel or is that down here at the sure I have this here yeah these are the previous and the next button you could say the idea was here to repeat buttons but in a very compact uh, form factor or sump control obviously yeah uh, which are have the same functions like the explicit buttons in the center console let's say this roller wheel here yeah. is like the rotary knob in the middle and has left and right clicks yeah. and see this all these symbols saying you this is the left and the right click and they're doing exactly the same yeah but here's this with the sump control and here's this with with explicit buttons and you have the same here for the for the volume for the button track. and previous and next and look to this element it makes exactly the same so um, you either use the center console or of course your passenger can use this and and I recommend and I like this way more uh, I like to recommend to keep the hand on the wheel and use this like in a pilot style those buttons this is way more powerful and explicitly safer one of our challenges uh, uh, you have uh, when you go with uh, computer graphics what obviously is here behind you want to create an, uh, an image and, 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 and user experience what looks like a physical element and that's why this is a very detailed graphics uh, uses uh, 3d depths also to create a physical effect and you need a very bright display which is capable even you said in the TD Roadster with an, with an, if this is opened uh, to withstand the uh, sunlight so we typically uh, can reach up to a thousand candle uh, which is uh, you could compare typically the double of a regular tablet yeah, which uh, is harder to read in the sun and of course with a cockpit you don't want to have blending or weak information you want to see this information at any time yeah and of course it's, it will be dimmed down if this gets darker so it will always have a, a very balanced brightness a very brilliant screen this is a high resolution screen and if you sit in distance distance what I'm sitting here typically you, know, you don't see any pixel no. since, uh, since this has a resolution that you um, it starts to have this retina effect the, the more your the more distance your eye has to the screen and there is a nice smooth anti-aliasing what is a, a computer graphics trick to make to make uh, pixels which are rectangle to look very smooth so it really has a physical effect and we put in also when, you, when I go back for example here to this list I can show you other effects like this here yeah we have some some physical scrolling effects and, and back bouncing here there is there is a little bit of uh, a physics engine behind this which gives you uh, an effect of mechanics instead of pure computer graphics mm -hmm. so it gets way more natural to op uh, to operate this and over the time the more you use this you totally forget that you have a that you have virtual reality here it becomes reality for you. Yeah?